Everlong is one of the biggest rock songs of the late 90s. Grunge died off, hard rock was making a comeback, and Foo Fighters was one of the few bands to lead this music into the new millennia. It's a love song that can make you feel both melancholic and empowered at the same time, and that's not something to take for granted. Since Foo Fighters are releasing a new album this February, and it's also one of my favorite bands, I thought it would be a cool idea to take a look at one of their classic songs while we're waiting. So in this video, we'll take a look at the production history, the guitars, and also the overall sound of Everlong. Back in 96, the Foo Fighters were based in Woodenville, Washington. Frontman Dave Grohl was lodging at Bear Creek Studios to record his second album, The Color and the Shape. During the band's debut self-titled album, Grohl played and recorded all the instruments by himself. But by the time of recording the second one, he had pieced together a band of four, consisting of Grohl himself, Pat Smear, Nate Mandel, and William Goldsmith. Most of Goldsmith's drumming on the album didn't make it to the finished version, and he was eventually replaced by Taylor Hawkins on drums, but that's another story. The lodge and studio that they were using at the time was originally a barn. This was a very calm place about 45 minutes outside of downtown Seattle. And during one of the breaks in between recording songs, Grohl came up with this riff that he thought sounded really great, but also a bit familiar. I remember coming up with the riff while we were recording Monkey Wrench. After working on the album for some time, Grohl went from Seattle to Virginia by himself. He worked with Gil Norton on the album after the Christmas holiday of 96, and when he listened to what they had recorded, he couldn't help but feel like something was missing. He still had this riff in the back of his mind. According to Grohl, it sounded similar to the guitar riff in Sonic Youth's song Schizophrenia. It does sound a bit similar to Everlong, don't you think? Fuck you, motherfucker! <laughs> he brought the riff to Gil Norton, and he thought it was great, and so Grohl decided to flesh the song out even more to put it on the record. Maybe this song was the missing piece to the puzzle. Now, Grohl went through a divorce at the time and decided to sleep at a friend's place. He fleshed out the verse with the band during jam sessions and worked out the rest of the riffs at his friend's place. The lyrics were inspired by a romance he had with Louise Post of the band Veruca Salt. And that leads us to the recording of the song. And I'm not gonna talk too much about the recording process. There's already a hugely detailed video out there by producer Warren Hewart over at his channel, Produced Like a Pro. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna check that out. Back in 2019, he made a video with a guy who engineered the song and the album with Foo Fighters, Bradley Cook. They listen to the song together and Cook talks about the mics, amps, guitars, everything that was used when the song was made. They even showcase and listen to the individual track recordings. Bass, drums, guitars and everything. Now the most interesting part of that video to me is that Grohl wanted his girlfriend Louise Post to do backing vocals for the song. She was in a different city at the time and couldn't come to the studio, so instead they had her singing over the phone. In another phone, she could hear the backing track, and so the guys literally recorded her vocals directly from a phone. I had never heard her vocals before because it's not that clear in the mix, but after watching this video and hearing it separated from the rest of the mix, it's impossible for me to unhear it. So let's review the guitar riffs here for a moment. This is super interesting. It's tuned down to drop D tuning, which basically means it's D, A, D, and G, B, E. This makes for some awesome power chords during the verse. During the pre-chorus, you have this double string phrasing with a muted D string. And then during the chorus, you have this variation of uh, B, G, and D chords. The 
reason I really like to play the song is because it's really to the point, you know, there's not a single space in the song that feels like filler, if you know what I mean. It's a great beginner song. It's a great song to learn if you're a beginner because it's kind of challenging. I would say it's on the border between something that's good for a beginner to an intermediate player. And the reason why I say that is because it can be challenging at times. You have these chord changes. That are really fast. You know, the standard pop song or pop rock song, I guess you can say, would be in the range of 80 to 120 beats per minute in terms of the speed, while this song is, I think it's in 158 beats per minute, which is pretty fast, you know? So there's a lot of fast changes here. Now, one of the central pillars of Dave Grohl's uh, guitar playing in particular is the fact that he's always or very often creating riffs with a drum beat in mind. And the reason for this is probably because he's been a drummer himself in bands like Scream, Nirvana, Them Crooked Vultures. So that's kind of his natural way of, of thinking about it. The way I look at a guitar is like a drum set. I look at the lower strings like their kicks and snares and I look at these like their cymbals. Everlong is probably one of the best examples of this fact that Dave Grohl is actually using this way of thinking to create riffs for the guitar. Because the, the drums and the guitars in the song are just so perfectly linked together. The kick and the snare are just perfectly matched to the way that the bass string and the chords are played during the verse. <laughs> Crashing cymbals in the pre-chorus hit at the exact same point as the chords are changing. And during the chorus, again, we see this unison between the kick and the snare and the way the guitar is strummed. To sum up, I want to say that Everlong is an amazing classic rock song that hopefully will help you check out some of Foo Fighters' lesser known songs. And talking about Foo Fighters' lesser known songs, I was doing this Instagram live thing where I was just chilling with some of you guys and I was just hanging out, listening to music, we recommended things back and forth. And there's one guy called Jay Sonata, I think he's called on Instagram. He, he recommended me this song by Foo Fighters called A320 and that song just blew my mind and I'd never heard it before. It's not on any other studio albums and I did a quick Google search just to find out where it's from and apparently it was the soundtrack for the film Godzilla from the late 90s. The point here is that I've been a fan of Foo Fighters for a decade now and I still find new songs that I haven't heard before that blow my mind. So Foo Fighters is like a gift that just keeps on giving, so I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't checked them out before. And now, for all you guitar nerds out there, I want to end this video with the Everlong Lightning Round, a guitar exercise inspired by Everlong. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So this is a double string phrasing exercise that's obviously inspired by the pre-chorus of Everlong. So here's how you play it. You put your index finger on the A string, your ring finger on the G string, and uh, this is basically the fourth and the sixth fret on the A and G string. And what you do is you strum three times like this. It's also really important that you mute the D string, which is in between the A and the G, with your uh, index finger. From there, you move from the 4th and 6th fret up to the 6th and 8th fret, and you strum three times as well with the exact same uh, finger pattern. From there, you move up to the 9th and 10th fret, and from there, you also move just one step up, or one fret up with the exact same pattern to the 11th or 9th and 11th fret. So all together it sounds like this. 
three, four. In the next part of the exercise, you hold the exact same finger positions and you strum in the exact same three strumming way. Uh, the only difference is that you move from the A and G string to the E and D string. From there, you move down two frets to the seventh and ninth fret and do the same there. And from there, you move down to the fifth and seventh fret on the E and D string and strum three times there as well. And finally, at the end, you have this little finger embellishment, which is the F, D sharp and C sharp. So that's the eighth, sixth and fourth fret of the A string. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out some more guitar lessons and you want to become a better guitarist, check out my Patreon page. I have some free and also paid for guitar lessons over there. So if you want to support my work and access all the guitar lessons, you can pay $3 a month and uh, you get access to all of them. So click the link in the description field below and check that out if you want to. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Cheers.